Hello everyone. Welcome back to Dr. K. Prem Primer video lecture series presenting by Dr. K. Prem, that's me. In today's lecture, we'll talk about the construction of uh, M13 MP2 cloning vectors. In previous video, I spoke about M13 MP2. Please listen to that so that you can understand the construction of uh, M13 MP2 very easy. Here, the difference between the M13 MP1 and M13 MP2 is addition of a creation of a, a cloning site in the lag Z prime region. M13 MP1 has only lag Z prime region, no restriction sites. But here, M13 MP2 has a popular and unique restriction sites created in the lag Z prime region. That's there in the intragenic region. Presence of eco hormone sites allows the cloning of foreign DNA fragments into the M13 MP2 vector. This is how you can clone your DNA into the any vector. M13 MP1 do not have any restriction site, but whereas M13 MP2 have one restriction site that's eco R1 that's in the lag Z prime region. How it is created, we will discuss in this video. Eco R1 restriction site is uh, GAA TTC. To develop M13 MP2, we use the M13 MP1 as a template where uh, M13 MP1 have lag Z prime region in the intragenic region. And the genome sequencing of M13 and uh, lag Z prime regions reveals that there are no popular and unique restriction sites in the M13 genome as well as the lag Z prime region. But when you, if you don't have a cloning uh, cloning sites in the genome in the vector, there is no possibility to clone. So we have to create restriction sites into the lag Z prime region, so that the the recombinants and the non recombinants can be screened based on the genetic selection marker, right? So the lag Z prime region is there in the intragenic region. So intragenic region do not have any unique restriction sites. And lag Z prime region also sequenced and it is also reveals that there is no popular and unique restriction sites present in the lag Z prime region of our beta galaxies. But upon close looking, close observation, the fourth codon of fourth codon to fifth, sixth codon, fourth codon, that's the ACG, fifth codon is GAT, and sixth codon is TCA of lag Z primary prime or uh, alpha peptide. So fourth codon, third nucleotide, fifth codon completely, and sixth codon, first two nucleotides, combination forms a GGA TTC. GGA TTC. So eco R1 site is GAA TTC. And here, fourth codon, last nucleotide, fifth codon completely, and sixth codon, first two nucleotides, forms a GGA TTC. The only difference between the uh, this sequence and eco R1 site is only, only one A. So if you can change the fifth code on first nucleotide G to A, that will become GAA ETC. That's a restriction site of uh, eco R1. So 
this is a very similar site similar site or similar site to the eco r1 right so if you can convert the fifth codon first nucleotide that's a g2 a then you get a eco r1 site but at the same time when you convert the g2 a then uh, it will become it will become uh, aspergin to the uh, it will become to the uh, aspartic acid to the aspergin right so we will see how we can do that change changing or you know conversion of uh, uh, fifth codon first nucleotide g2 a in this uh, lecture here we use the in vitro metagenesis in vitro metagenesis requires the single strand dna single strand dna as well as the metagen right specific metagen is required here you see this is the you see n methyl nitrosourea this is what is the methylating agent it's a cancer causing agent car carcinogen which can modify, which can methylate the guanine nucleotide, guanine base, and methylate guanine can bind or base pair with the thymine instead of uh, cytosine. So it allows the conversion of uh, GC to AT transition mutation. So metagenesis, metagenesis metagen and methyl nitrosourea, which methylates the guanine and the methylated guanine can interact it can bind with the only thymine in the complementary strands right which will allow the transition of uh, gc to at right so here we have used the n methyl nitrosuria to uh, methylate the m13 mp1 uh, vector see this is a second uh, first nucleotide of the fifth codon is um, methylated using the n methyl nitrosurea then the methylated single strand m13 mp1 is transformed into the e coli methylated single strand m13 mp1 is uh, transformed into the e coli once they transform, they this construct enters into the E. coli genome, undergoes the first round of replication. Immediately, it undergoes the replication to form a replicate form. It's a double strand uh, molecule. In in the first round of replication, so methylated guanine, methylated guanine will interact. Will form a. Uh, it will uh, allow the base pairs with the thymine instead of uh, cytosine. Usually, guanine base pairs with the only cytosine, which is there in the complementary strand. But here, you see, methylated guanine interacts or form a, a, allows the binding with the only thymine in the data strand, right? So methylated guanine undergoes the replication and uh, base pairs with the thymine instead of uh, cytosine. So allowed for subsequent uh, rounds of replication the, of the, this construct. And then what happened in subsequent replication, the methylated guanine is replaced by the adenine. That happens during the repair. When our DNA is undergoing replication, then followed by the repair, wherever there is a mismatched, uh, mismatched uh, base space are there, they are replaced by the correct base bases. Here, methylated guanine is, is uh, base space with the thymine. In subsequent uh, replication, the methylated guanine is replaced during the replication with the, with the adenine. You see? Adenine. So subsequent replication allows the repair and where uh, uh, methylated guanine is replaced with the adenine. And now you see GAA, TTC. 
then isolate the isolate the replicative forms from the e coli that's a double stranded uh, m13 constructs and digest with the e coli r1 so whichever construct is having modified from uh, guanine to the adenine and they will undergo the digestion with the e coli r1 and forms the linear uh, molecule see digestion with the e coli r1 and forms the linear one some of the some of the replicative forms of this m30 m13 construct who do not undergo the change at the uh, lag z fifth codon they don't undergo the they don't they don't allow the digestion so they'll remain in the replicative forms right replicative forms so you see uh, the lag z prime region is having one nucleotide difference from the its e coli one side if that guanine is methylated then the guanine methylated guanine binds to the adenine adenine right uh, sorry th uh, thymine then in subsequent replication the methylated guanine is replaced with the adenine then here you can see formation of a uh, e coli one restriction site then you isolate the replicated form of that and digest with the e coli one whichever uh, replicative form have a change at the lag z fifth first first uh, fifth codon and first nucleotide then then that uh, replicative form undergoes the digestion and forms the linear otherwise they'll remain in the replicative forms or circular then separate the linear molecules from the linear molecules from the circular uh, replicative forms through the agarose electrophoresis where uh, circulars one will move faster and the linear ones slow uh, move slower so we can uh, cut that uh, particular uh, band and we can uh, you know separate from the uh, circular ones linearized replicative forms are separated from undigested that means we have a e coli one restriction site right again linearized e coli linearized uh, m13 uh, constructs are again recircularized we use recircularized by ligation with the help of 44 linear ligases linearized uh, replicative forms are recircularized by ligation then leads to the formation, formation of a circular replicative forms with the e r one restriction site in the lag z prime region. Again, this construct is transformed into the E. coli and that E. coli is having the only omega, omega encoding region of uh, beta galaxy base, right? So that E. coli can uh, synthesize the omega peptide of uh, beta galactosidase and that transformed E. coli is plated on the media containing IPTG and x right? And uh, then uh, that E. coli forms a functional beta galactosidase because uh, the mutation in the fifth codon from G2A, that's uh, as per aspartic acid to asparagine do not have a any problem with the reconstitution of uh, alpha peptide from the m13 vector and uh, omega peptide from this genome form a functional beta galactosidase and forms the blue colonies upon uh, uh, exgal uh, lysis then from here the the blue plaques are from the blue plaques you can collect the M13 uh, construct, which is having the restriction site at the lag Z region, that's called as a M13 MP2. This is how you construct the uh, M13 MP2 from M13 MP1. So the entire process it tells you that how the uh, fifth codon G is converted into the A to form a 
GAA TTC. You, you can see here, this is a lag Z region where the fourth, fifth, and sixth quadrant combination, combination of uh, say, uh, uh, last, uh, last letter of fourth quadrant and the entire quadrant of fifth and the last two, first two letters of sixth quadrant as a G, GGA TTC. But uh, once you methylate that using the methylating agent and uh, transformation, digestions, and recirculation, and confirms that uh, that uh, methylated guanine is replaced by using using by, uh, replaced with the A and form the eco R1 site in the lag Z region. This is what is called as M13 M13 MP2 vector. All right. Hope you understand the concept. If at all you like it, try to subscribe my channel. That's uh, Dr. K Prem Primer. And uh, if you have any questions, please write to me in the comment section. I'll get back to you once I see. Thank you all for listening. Bye-bye.